Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be looking at another example of a chi-squared, but I also am going to be showing you how to create output with R for a chi-squared so you don't have to do it by hand, and then we'll be using the FRED method to do the analysis. So we've already dealt with um, some two-way tables, and the chi-squared is very similar because it's using a two-way table. And so you'll notice that when we do this code for the chi-squared, it's going to look like that two-way table we created um, in videos past. So I'm going to start by reading in my data, and then I'm going to remind myself of the variable names. Um, we need two categorical variables, and we're going to do year and whether or not a student is superstitious. So those will be our two variables. And then I want to tell R that, again, that if it sees a period, it should recognize that as a missing value because uh, those will mess with our columns um, and create some issues when we review conditions. So we want to make sure that they're recognized as being uh, missing. So now I'm going to write code to do the chi-squared. And what you'll notice here is I have chi-square, so C-H-I-S-Q, and then I'm going to do dot test. But now I am going to follow almost the same format that we had for the two-way table. So my explanatory variable comes in first. And remember, oops, I'm going to need a uh, parenthesis there. My explanatory variable comes in first, so that would be the uh, year in school. And I expect that to affect whether or not someone is superstitious. Then I say my data, so data equals GVSU. I will not include that format percent because that's not necessary. Um, this isn't a typical contingency table, but I'm telling it to do the analysis for this contingency table. And then I'm going to say use NA um, equals no. So then I'll close that up and I'm going to highlight the whole row and do my shortcut keys, control enter, and you can see our results. So that's excellent. We've gotten the chi-square to be calculated for us. We have degrees of freedom and the p-value. So one thing that I would like to add is that I want the expected counts. And so to do that, I'm going to type output. I actually, if you just noticed, copied the line above. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to run this again, but I just assigned that to an object called output. And now I'm going to call for that output. And when you do the dollar sign, remember, that's telling you um, that you have this variable or item that you want from the output uh, object. So when I do that, now you can see I have my expected counts. So I'm just really quickly going to snip those so that we can put them in a Word document and utilize those in a minute. So let's copy that and paste and then we'll rerun uh, this line so we can get that output so new snip snippity doodah copy into my word document paste all right now remember when we do the fred method we start with formulate the problem so f for fred and let's zoom in a little for you um, our first thing is the population, and this data is from GVSU students. So I'm going to say all GVSU students, and then remember the sample is going to be the exact same thing. It's just the number that you have, um, which for this one, my recollection is that it's 2,256 GVSU students. And then the variables we have are going to be year and superstition. Superstitious. Yes, I'll say that. And then we have to remember write the null and alternative. And remember that the null is always um, there is no association or there's not an association. Um, so H sub O goes with no. So there's no association between uh, year and whether or not you are students are superstitious. Okay, and I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to do the alternative and remember that the only thing that changes is instead of no, we have an. So that's the F in our friend. Now we can review conditions. So we have all of these expected counts and you can see that my smallest is nine. So um, no cells have an expected count less than one or five. So remember that with the R, you're reviewing conditions, less than 20% of cells can have an expected count less than five, and none can ever be less than one. Well, since our lowest is nine, we know that that meets both of those conditions. So then for calculate the, or execute calculations, actually I actually already have my chi-squared um, test 
statistic because it's been calculated for me. So if I look at that, you can see it's right here. So that's 2.9701. Um, and then the, the p-value uh, is 0.5628. You can see that here. So 0.5628. And then um, this is based on a degree of freedom equal to 4. So that is a large p-value. So now the last part of executing calculations, we have to make a decision on the null. Because that's so large, this time we're going to actually fail to reject the null. So we are not seeing evidence of a relationship here uh, because that p-value is so big and the test statistic is actually quite small. So that means in terms of the curve, it's further in, closer to that zero. Um, and if we were to compare side by side the superstition, and you know what, let's just do that. Let's do that. So what I'm going to do right now is I actually am going to make an additional um, observed count table. And to do that, I am going to do the tally and then I'm going to do year and then I'm going to do that superstition and I'm going to run that. No, oh, I don't want that. I don't want it as percent. I want it as the count. There we go. And I'm going to snip that new snippety doodle copy into my Word document paste. Now you can see that the difference between the observed, so that's what's on the right, and the expected counts, which is on the left, they're actually quite close. So 274 and 288, um, 242 and 227, 7 and 9, those are all very close, which is why we don't see a large chi-square test statistic because that happens when there's a big difference between the expected or what we expect to see if there's no relationship and what we're actually observing in the data. So remember, if those two numbers are very close together, that means that you're not seeing an association because both what you observe and what you expect to see if there's no relationship seem to be the same. So because of that, we're failing to reject the null and that's the end of our E. And so our last part for drawing conclusions, when you say fail to reject, you say there is, and let's scroll up so you can see it better, there is insufficient. So we always say that when it goes with um, fail to reject. So there's insufficient evidence to suggest. And remember that you're always restating your alternative. So always A, never know. It's the way I remember it for this part of drawing conclusions. So I actually am gonna just copy and paste. So there's insufficient evidence to suggest there is an association between year and whether or not, um, and I'm gonna actually add in your GVSU students. <clears throat> and that's it. Because we did not see evidence of a relationship or an association, we would not continue on to do the post hoc. So that is our discussion on um, how to do a chi-squared, our very first hypothesis test. See you in future videos.